check it out. It's your boy Debo. You're watching Debo the Don TV. When you have a moment, like, share, subscribe, leave a comment below, and don't forget to hit that notification button. Hello, everyone. My name is Debo. Thank you for tuning in to Debo the Don TV. Are you listening? Well, uh, you know, you mentioned, you know, having a good time and, you know, um, in private conversation, you said that, you know, in your day, people weren't switch scary. Yep. M more recently, you had um, made a comment on Facebook where you said that, why is it when someone is filming, you know, a, 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 a caravan, a lowriders, no one hits their switches. Right. And you got a lot of backlash from it. Okay. A lot of people came in, they attacked you, they uh, went for the jugular, but they also went for the gut. You know, what is your views on that as, <clears throat> as of right now with um, the current lowrider population here in Florida? What do, you, what, what do you feel like it needs improvement in that area? Well, first, I mean, I'm glad to see low riding making a resurgence yeah. in Central Florida and South Florida, over on the West Coast, everywhere in Florida is really coming back. But the majority of what I see, man, the cruising game just isn't the same, man. Like I said, cats just seem like they're scared to get on a switch out here. Yeah. I don't think you need to be fly hopping everywhere you go, but Again, I, I'm a videographer. I mean, I do automotive videos, automotive photography, and and we we love that content, man. I mean, and you you give me some content, like D. Let's say you coming up in your Cutlass, yeah, and you're cruising. You see me filming, and you all you gotta do is tap that front switch, yeah. Man, I'm gonna shout you out all over the place on my video. Yeah. You know, it's it's gonna give you that that that's your 50 minutes of fame or whatever. You know, back in our back in the day, man, 90s, we we, we were on our switches. We were, we were clowning, dude. We were having fun, and we didn't give a shit about the cops. Now, some guys on that comment, or in that post, made comments about, well, you know, we got Class A CDLs, whatever. That's cool. I, I get that. Mm -hmm. If you got a Class A CDL, and that's how you make your living to provide for your family, I don't have a problem with you not taking a chance on getting your CDL revoked. I honestly don't have a problem with anybody that doesn't want to hit the switches. I just have a problem with not hitting switches and just calling yourself a lowrider or being in the lowrider game. Isn't that what lowriding is? Yeah. Getting out on the boulevard, clowning with your shit? Yeah. I mean, that's that's what made me want to do it, seeing uh, the Chinks and Chong, seeing uh, Dr. Dre nothing but a G thing. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, looking at the early Easy e and then slash NWA videos, just seeing the cars boom, 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 you know? And that was always like the, um, I would say the difference between like the West Coast more so like Southern California style of low riding in the East Coast is those guys are so far advanced. You saw their music videos, he's like, vroom, vroom. Exactly. And then on the East Coast here, you've seen guys just side to side. They weren't even really that advanced as far as hand switches. And we went from but at least that to now where we, we got, got up to speed where people are, you know, um, maneuvering at a high performance level, but then it kind of like took a step back. Yeah, it's just, it I don't know, like I said, I mean, they, they can do whatever they want. It's, it's not my job, and it's and it really isn't my right or responsibility to tell you, hey, hit your switches. Yeah. But I just love to see low riding come back to its fullest capacity. Okay. You know? Yeah. Now, um, I want to ask you a few questions in regards to your experience as being a painter. Okay. You mentioned that, you know, you started off doing candy paints. Now, how long did you paint for? Um, what were your greatest moments painting? And then what was like your most discouraging moments where you felt like, yo, I don't even want to do this no more? Which is kind of where I'm at at this point. Yeah. <laughs> um, my greatest moments to me in, in my painting is when I finish a job and seeing what it started as and how, how it looks when it leaves. Yeah. Um, the discouraging part about it is people think they're paying you for a paint job. They're not, it's artwork. What we do is artwork. We're, we're artists. We're not car painters. Yeah. Car painters when you go to Mako. Yeah. Car painters, you go to the dealership and you get your fender fixed. 
you want a metal flake job with five different candy colors and pinstriping, silver leaf, gold leaf, airbrushing, that's that's Picasso, dude. That's artwork. You know, you aren't you're not gonna go to Rembrandt and offer him fifty dollars for his painting. You're talking million dollar in priceless paintings. Well, I'm giving you a one of a kind working rolling piece of art. Ten times bigger than anything Picasso's done. Not not bigger in, in grandeur as far as the name, but in size. You know, you're taking somebody's car and you're turning it from plain stock to all these graphics and colors and designs. And it's the one thing that they can put on their car that nobody else is gonna have the same thing. They might roll up and have the same wheels as somebody. They might roll up and have the same stereo head unit setup as somebody, but the paint job, when you do a custom paint job, that's why it's called custom. It should always be different than the next man's. Yes. So what what you're asking people to pay for is art. You're not yeah. you're not asking to be paid for a paint job. Yeah. You know? Um so discouraging is not being able to get paid enough to make a living doing something that I love to do that should be able to pay more than well enough to make a living doing it. Now, when was that moment that you decided that you said, hey, I don't even want to paint anymore? Uh, to be honest, I've done it a couple of times. Yeah. I've gotten burnt out a few times. Um, this last time was probably it. I had a car in my possession, and this is one that I'm really not proud of, but yeah. I'm really proud about how the end result went. Because uh, one thing I always do is make sure that when a car leaves me, no matter what the circumstance or situation was, me and the owner of that car are satisfied with the outcome. Mm -hmm. I had a car in my possession that me and another shop took in. Honestly, the car left probably six months ago, maybe a little less than six months ago. And we took this car in over three years ago at a shop I was working at in another city. And me and the owner of that shop collaborated and we were gonna do this job. Well, money was handed over. This gentleman ended up paying in full for his paint job mm -hmm. and his body work and everything. And nothing ever got done to the car that needed to get done in order for me to do what I was commissioned to do, which was to lay the patterns and graphics on his roof and his trunk. Yeah. I end up pulling the car from that shop. Don't get no money back from the owner of the shop. Yeah take it to another shop, pay out of my pocket, and yeah. have somebody body work this car and get it ready for me to do more than what I was supposed to do, which is get it ready for me to paint the whole car. That shop ends up having this guy's car for a year and a half. Mm. Man, customer's pissed. He's mad, he's mad at me, he's mad at them. But I've, one thing I always made sure to do while I was talking to him was to keep him in the loop. This is what's going on, man. Here's here's some pictures, this is what's happening. Yeah. You know, always let, you, always let your customer know what's happening with their vehicle. If they call, answer the damn phone. Don't don't sidestep, don't don't bob and weave, you know, let them know what's going on. Be real with your customer and they'll understand. Yeah. Worst that can happen is, hey, give me my shit, I'm taking it out of here. Yeah. So we came down to that point where the customer finally had enough, he wants to get his car. I ended up convincing him to let, said, hey, let me just finish at least what you commissioned me to do. Yeah. I said, remember, I've made no money on your car. I said, you paid the other shop. Only money I got in my hands was to buy the materials to do my part of the job. My, my cut was coming at the end of the job, which never happened. I said, now, I said, I'm out money in your car by paying other shops. Let me finish what I was hired to do by you. So that's what I did. I ended up finishing this guy's roof in his trunk, handed, handed the car off to another shop to finish. It's completely out of my hands. The phone call I got, from the owner of that car, after he finally got to see his car, he goes, John, I don't give a shit about anything else on this car that didn't go right. You went so far above and beyond what I expected you to do on my roof and trunk. He goes, I'm speechless. I don't even know what to say. He goes, it's beautiful. He goes, thank you. He goes, me and you have no problems. <coughs> Excuse me. Yes. And that, that makes me feel good, but the whole situation discouraged the shit out of me. Yes. You know, I'm here trying to do something for somebody. I put my name on the line, I put my word on the line, and I'm not able to hold up my end of the word. Yeah. You know? But I ended up figuring a, a way to make it right. Yeah. Um, chasing money. 
chasing money from people. That's another thing that just discourages. You know, you, you do a job and then you're sitting there, job's finished, and you're trying to get these people to come pick up their shit and pay for it. I shouldn't have to do that. I've had jobs where they've told me, hey, I'm, I can pay this much money. Cut people deals because they didn't have enough money, but I, I want to see some nice shit out there. I want to see these people have nice things. I got this much. Can you do it for me? Fine. Let's do it. Yeah. I get the job done. Oh, well, I don't have it. I spend it on Christmas presents. Hmm. So you spent my money hmm. on Christmas presents for your kids. Yeah. I know your kids need Christmas presents. Mine do, too. I said, but as soon as you hired me to do this job and told me you had X amount of dollars to pay me, that money should have been put aside and forgotten about until I call you to tell you, tell you this job is done, find that money. Yeah. So that's 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 my discouragement, man, just not being able to survive. I mean, almost coming to a point of financial ruin. I, I almost lost my house over not being able to pay bills because I couldn't make no money doing custom paint. So just being in the economical deficit, mm -hmm. painting cars and dealing with unreliable customers, you just kind of burnt out. I'm just burnt out. Now, uh, I want to ask you, uh, what what projects that you were responsible for got uh, international coverage? Yours and then also customers as well. Um, well, I've had a couple of cars, and one car in Lowrider Magazine and one car in Orly's Lowriding. I'm not responsible for doing any of the actual work on those. It was before I was painting or doing anything. Yes. Again, this was Anthony from Rhodes Auto Works that took care of those. It was a, uh, and again, I'll get clowned for this, yes. but it was a 94 Honda Civic. Okay. The, ori the original paint job was a candy lime gold, patterned out, 13 inch McLeans, yes. white wall tires. I hadn't gotten to the point of hydraulics and stereo. It was literally just a car with a paint job and rims, but it made Orly's low riding. That car, a few months later, got side got sideswiped. Ruined the paint job. Mm. Ended up taking it back to Anthony. He did a multicolored flake. I want to say, I want to say it was 12 colors, all patterned out on his car. I had a guy named Chris Cruz out of Deland do an airbrush mural on the hood, and Anthony did the paint job and put a black rag top on it. Bought a set of chrome and gold roadsters and some white walls. Slapped it on. Took it to Miami. They made it in the magazine and took best multicolor in the show. I believe that was in 95 or 96. Um, other things that I've had in magazines, uh, Eddie Cardenas with his car, Me Gusto. Yeah, Eddie so, from, well, used to be in Uso. Used to be in Uso, right. now he's with Traditions Car Club. Hey, shout out to Eddie. Love you, brother. That's my dog. Yeah. Um, I did his, uh, did his Regal, and that car, to this day, when it comes out, and this is 13 years ago, I believe it's been at least since I painted this car, it'll come out today and still win best of show when it pulls out to a show. Mm. Not just because of the paint. I mean, it's got so much detail in it, but the paint is a big factor. I mean, yeah. everything's painted on that car, from interior pieces to the body, to the engine block, the engine bay, undercarriage, everything. Yeah. Um, so, you know, you talk, you talk about a car that's a vintage paint job that's still coming out crushing shit when it comes out. Yeah. Um, did a motorcycle that was uh, basically it was, it was put on display up in Panama City, Florida, and it was the, uh, the cover bike for their Panama City Beach Bike Week for three years in a row. Okay. It was called the Fallen Heroes Bike. Hmm. This, this bike was badass, man. Fully molded bobber, uh, candy root beer, bowling ball with like five different colors of flake underneath the candy, had gold leafing. Had, a, had some camo paint work done to it, yeah. had some airbrushing, and it had names of a bunch of soldiers that had passed away in battle. Um, interesting story about that is people would always ask, well, how did you decide whose names to put on there? You know, how, you're missing people, so you can't put every, well, obviously I can't put every name of every fallen soldier, but the bike being called Fallen Heroes, I mm -hmm. so kind of the way we did it was just, my airbrush artist found a registry of names of soldiers that had passed away in battles. Yeah. And pretty much he closed his eyes, put his finger down, whatever name it landed on, that's the name he put on it. He did a whole list of names, like an airbrush scroll on the top of the tank. Yeah. Really, really nice work. Now, um, you've, you've painted both cars, you've painted bikes. Have you painted any lowrider bikes? In your, it, during the your only, time as a painter? The only lowrider bike I ever painted was my son's. You painted your son's? Okay. Painted my son's lowrider bike. Okay. Now, um, currently you say you're on a paint hiatus. 
semi-retired? To, to some point, yeah. All right, so just get us up to speed to what you're doing as of today. As of today, employment-wise, I work for a company doing, of all things, painting. Yes. Painting power boats. Okay. Great job, a lot more money. I don't have to chase my money. It's there every Monday. Yes. And it's good money. I make, I'm making more than I ever made working for myself doing custom paint work. Well, that's beautiful. It's, it's beautiful, but it's sad at the same point. Yes. <coughs> but aside from that, I've got a company with me and my buddy T called Riding Old Schools. Riding Old Schools, okay. It's a company, it's a brand. Yes. We do automotive videography, automotive photography. We utilize models for a lot of the photo shoots. Um, we have a clothing line that we're working on. Right now, it's going to be strictly printed T-shirts, mm -hmm. but we're looking to expand that. Um, we have a YouTube channel, Riding Old Schools on YouTube, all one word. Subscribe. Subscribe, thank you. And uh, you'll see a lot of our videos on there. You'll see all of our videos on there. Okay. Um, so that's 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 one of my things. Everything I do, just about, man, I, I, it's been about cars all my life, man. I just, I love cars. Yes. Now, there's a few other things. I'm also looking to get into a real estate game. Okay. Flipping some houses with a buddy of mine named, a uh, buddy of mine, Randy Richards, out of the land, Florida. Yes. So we're teaming up, doing some stuff. And, uh... I don't laugh. Yes. But when I find some spare time, I go out in the woods and hunt for snakes. Yes. I love that shit, man. It's just, it's, it's just fun. It's a, you know, it, it's nature to me, man. It's, it's, it's my, it's my quiet place, man. I go out there. I don't, I don't think about my problems. I don't think about none of the bullshit. poor, none of the poor paying customers. I don't think about none of that shit, man. Yeah. It's just me and nature, man. And it really. It really eases my mind, man. It's, it's a sense of a sense of peace when I'm out there. Okay. You know? well, well, that's beautiful. I'm happy for you.